Training of the Will Without strength of mind, nothing worthy of accomplishment can be done, and the cultivation of that steadfastness and stability of character, which is commonly called willpower, is one of the foremost duties of man, for its possession is essentially necessary both to his temporal and eternal well-being. Fixedness of purpose is at the root of all successful efforts, whether in things worldly or spiritual, and without it, man cannot be otherwise than wretched, and dependent upon others for that support which should be found within himself. The mystery which has been thrown around the subject of cultivation of the will, for those who advertise to sell occult advice on the matter for so many dollars, should be avoided and dispelled, for nothing could be further removed from secrecy and mystery than the practical methods by which alone strength of will can be developed. The true path of will cultivation is only to be found in the common everyday life of the individual, and so obvious and simple is it that the majority, looking for something complicated and mysterious, pass it by unnoticed. A little logical thought will soon convince a man that he cannot be both weak and strong at the same time, that he cannot develop a stronger will while remaining a slave to weak indulgences, and that therefore the direct and only way to that greater strength is to assail and conquer his weaknesses. All the means for that cultivation of the will are already at hand in the mind and life of the individual. They reside in the weak side of his character, by attacking and vanquishing which the necessary strength of will be developed. He who has succeeded in grasping this simple, preliminary truth will perceive that the whole science of will cultivation is embodied in the following seven rules. 1. Break off bad habits. 2. Form good habits. 3. Give scrupulous attention to the duty of the present moment. 4. Do vigorously and at once whatever has to be done. 5. Live by rule. 6. Control the tongue. 7. Control the mind. Anyone who earnestly meditates upon and diligently practices the above rules will not fail to develop that purity of purpose and power of will which will enable him to successfully cope with every difficulty and pass triumphantly through every emergency. It will be seen that the first step is the breaking away from bad habits. This is no easy task. It demands the putting forth of great efforts or a succession of efforts, and it is by such efforts that the will can alone be invigorated and fortified. If one refuses to take the first step, he cannot increase in willpower, for by submitting to a bad habit, because of the immediate pleasure which it affords, one forfeits the right to rule over himself, and is so far a weak slave. He who thus avoids self-discipline, and looks about for some occult secrets for gaining willpower at the expenditure of little or no effort on his part, is deluding himself, and is weakening the willpower which he already possesses. The increased strength of will which is gained by success in overcoming bad habits enables one to initiate good habits, for while the conquering of a bad habit requires merely strength of purpose, the forming of a new one necessitates the intelligent direction of purpose. To do this, a man must be mentally active and energetic, and must keep a constant watch upon himself. As a man succeeds in perfecting himself in the second rule, it will not be very difficult for him to observe the third, that of giving scrupulous attention to the duty of the present moment. Thoroughness is a step in the development of the will which cannot be passed over. Slipshod work is an indication of weakness. Perfection should be aimed at, even in the smallest task, by not dividing the mind, but giving the whole attention to each separate task as it presents itself. Singleness of purpose and intense concentration of mind are gradually gained, two mental powers which give weight and worth of character and bring repose and joy to their possessor. The fourth rule, 
that of doing vigorously, and at once, whatever has to be done, is equally important. Idleness and a strong will cannot go together, and procrastination is a total barrier to the acquisition of purposeful action. Nothing should be put off until another time, not even for a few minutes. That which ought to be done now should be done now. This seems a little thing, but it is of far-reaching importance. It leads to strength, success, and peace. The man who is to manifest a cultivated will must also live by certain fixed rules. He must not blindly gratify his passions and impulses, but must school them to obedience. He should live according to principle and not according to passion. He should decide what he will eat and drink and wear, and what he will not eat and drink and wear, how many meals per day he will have, and at what times he will have them, at what time he will go to bed, and at what time he will get up. He should make rules for the right government of his conduct in every department of his life, and should religiously adhere to them. To live loosely and indiscriminately, eating and drinking and sensually indulging at the beck and call of appetite and inclination, is to be a mere animal, and not a man with will and reason. The beast in man must be scourged and disciplined and brought into subjugation, and this can only be done by training the mind and life on certain fixed rules of right conduct. The saint attains to holiness by not violating his vows, and the man who lives according to good and fixed rules is strong to accomplish his purpose. The sixth rule, that of controlling the tongue, must be practiced until one has perfect command of his speech, so that he utters nothing in peevishness, anger, irritability, or with evil intent. The man of strong will does not allow his tongue to run thoughtlessly and without check. All these six rules, if faithfully practiced, will lead up to the seventh, which is the most important of them all, namely, rightly controlling the mind. Self-control is the most essential thing in life, yet least understood, but he who patiently practices the rules herein laid down, bringing them into requisition in all his ways and undertakings, will learn, by his own experience and efforts, how to control and train his mind, and to earn thereby the supreme crown of manhood, the crown of a perfectly poised will.